Warm greetings, everyone, to all our friends from around the globe. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you. This is Ramon Rocha, greeting you from the MAI headquarters in Carl Stream, Illinois. Greetings to you, Balaz Sagoni, who is joining us from Romania. And greetings Balaz, to you, Ramon. Please say hi and greet our friends here on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Please I'm... greet them. Yeah. Sorry? Please greet our friends. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm really happy to have all of you. And hello to all of you. And I'm looking forward to our interaction today. I'm really honored to be asked to have to do this session. Yes. MEI's mission is to help equip and encourage global Christian writers and publishers to create life transforming materials in their heart language and in their local context that these publications will help strengthen the church and impact society. And we trust that today's webinar, how to build characters with dynamic traits would be, help, would be helpful to you Christian writers. We are glad to see 58 participants register from 21 countries for today's webinar. Thank you all for those of you who have joined us live. Please interact with our speaker and with each other, in fact, by using the chat. And you can ask your questions anytime using the Q&A. I googled how important characters are in writing stories, and here is what I found. I quote, characters serve as the driving force in your story. Your characters create and push your plot forward. Readers can experience the world that you created through your characters. And you could tackle different types of conflicts, tensions, as well as resolutions through your characters." Unquote. I'll stop there and we will let our speaker, Balaj, teach us. Balaj Zagoni has been involved in publishing and writing for many years now. He is the author of 14 fiction and nonfiction books written for children and young adults. His book, The Spear Black Light Series One, we have a copy here, the office, won the best young adult fiction prize in Hungary in 2019 and two other prizes in Romania. We are so blessed to have Balaj as our presenter today. Blas, please take it away. Thank you for the introduction, Ramon. I, I'm involved with MAI, I think, for um, at least 10 years. Um, my first um, lead word was in Kenya, then in Singapore, and now later in, in Hungary, where probably I met some of you. I'm actually sure that I've met some of you. And um, I presented a version of this uh, seminar also there. Um, I live in Romania in a big city called Cluj in the western part of, of Romania and uh, I teach at the Babes Boya University at the Hungarian Department of Film and Media. And um, what I'm talking about, uh, we'll talk now, is, um, is a, one method basically uh, which is possible to be used in uh, different kinds of writing from short stories to novels to stage or to screen. Um, I don't think it's a better method than the others, but I think it's a useful one. I myself use it quite a lot and I hope that you will also find uh, useful. I will share my screen and uh, depending on, on, um, on time, uh, we will uh, do maybe a short uh, writing exercise at the end, uh, about 10 minutes, but uh, that's really depending on, on time. Uh, just a second, I try to start my presentation. Okay. Uh, yes. 
can you all see the starting uh, page yes. of the, okay, thank you. Uh, before we go to in this dynamic character traits method, um, I would like to talk about a more common, more uh, well-known uh, model. Uh, this is called the big five model. I'm not sure if any of, I'm, probably uh, many of you have heard about this. Uh, this was developed in the late 50s uh, by two military psychologists, uh, Raymond uh, uh, Crystal and Ernest Tubes. And uh, the original aim was uh, for Air Force recruits, basically to select the possible recruits. And if you ask me, the model I think still uh, has some, uh, uh, so you can see on the model that it was uh, uh, built for this purpose, but later it was confirmed by research and developed further. So it become a kind of a standard in, in psychology and also in, uh, in uh, theory about uh, writing and designing characters. Um, this model actually is based on dimensions and uh, I will use uh, some uh, examples from Akira and Pelican's book, The Science of Writing Characters. One of these dimensions is uh, extroversion, introversion. As you see, there are um, uh, opposites. And as we go further, these all uh, dimensions have uh, some opposites, agreeableness, disagreeableness, neuroticism, emotional stability, conscientiousness and unconscientiousness, openness or closeness to experiences. Now, um, Pelican says that more interesting and memorable characters um, second, I can see the whole whole uh, uh, screen. I'll try to minimize just a second. Maybe I'll not be able. We make a strong impression because they rate towards the extremes of some of the facets uh, of personality. They are memorable because they are atypical. Now, if we see these five dimensions, basically what she says, the author says that uh, uh, because they, they tend to the extremes and as much as they tend to the extremes, they have become more interesting and more atypical, of course. Uh, and I give you some examples. More of them will be from series or films and some from literature. Um, some of you might know the uh, series Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, obviously she is an extrovert. And uh, that is the origin of many adventures she has. So Midge is an extrovert. Uh, another example, one of my favorites, a TV series called Breaking Bad. Um, if you have seen, maybe the first thing it comes to your mind about Walter White is, is not his uh, conscientiousness, but he is a very conscientious person. And that, again, leads to many uh, interesting twists in the story. Another example, which is also a film and also a uh, uh, book, of course, is The Hobbit, uh, where we have uh, uh, not openness, but closeness to experience. If you remember the scene when Bilbo Baggins is approached by uh, Gandalf and uh, he refuses any kind of adventures, he says, sorry, I don't want any adventures. Thank you, not, not today. So we have these examples and um, um, once I was uh, listening to Lori Hutzers, uh, who she was the head of the UCLA Film School, um, one of his podcasts, I think, and she had a sentence, uh, something like this, a character's greatest strength is also his or her uh, greatest weakness. Now, not everyone agrees with this sentence, but anyway, it was uh, interesting for me, and so I started to think in uh, possibility that we imagine uh, characters as a uh, trait, as an axis, rather than a point on an axis. So one character trait should be an axis with two ends, with two uh, uh, opposite ends, which are negative and positive. And uh, let's give it a try. If I say courageous, 
or courage. What would be the opposite of this in terms of it's still courage, but in a negative or distorted way? I'm just uh, checking. Or the uh, can use the chat, yes. Yes, please use the chat for uh, give me some feedback. So that's, that's Coletta says. Aggressive, yeah, already we have aggressive. Great, uh, exactly. And uh, of course, this kind of game, I would say, works quite well um, uh, with different words. I mean, um, you can find uh, 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 different antinomes. Courageous, I put reckless, for instance. Yeah, aggressive is a bit, it's a bit different, but uh, uh, I think you got the idea. Let's do the other way. What if uh, I say stubborn? What stubborn is obviously a negative, uh, and what would be the positive equivalent, but something still from the same fabric as stubborn? Uh, timid. As this comes for uh, for uh, for stubborn. Okay. Um, I said persistent, but again, uh, those of you who have a much longer uh, standing relationship with the English language and more intimate, you you can uh, help me with this, of course. Uh, let's see another one. Prudent. It goes with covered. So the idea is that you have one uh, character trait, which can work in a positive and a negative way as well. Confident can become arrogant. Determined can become pushing in a negative uh, uh, way. Sincere can become tactless. Uh, and there is another page. Of course, you can do many, many uh, examples. And there are sometimes it's easier to describe with more words, economical, thrifty, or misers can be the opposite, witty, humorous, sarcastic, mocking, compassionate, sympathetic. It can go easily to someone who is easily influenced. Educating and lecturing. I remember having a a long discussion about lecturing is a negative or a positive one, but we can maybe agree that there is a way of lecturing which is absolutely negative. Caring we can become intrusive. And so a, a healthy self esteem can become a, a cockiness or proudness. Now, uh, I will give you some examples um, from stories. Oh no, uh, first of all, let's, let's just imagine um, situations in which these can work. For instance, one character can be gener uh, generally courageous, but uh, at a certain situation, in a certain situation, he becomes reckless and causes a tragedy, right? That you can have a, a start of a story in this way. Or um, someone can be humorous or witty, in a way, the heart of a company. But in one certain uh, moment, he becomes sarcastic and he hurts someone. And of course, later he has to pay dearly for this one. Again, a possibility of a story. And you still are in the same character trait. You don't have to invent another one to give him a negative uh, uh, characteristic. Or uh, we can go from the other way. Someone can be intrusive most of the time, and then maybe uh, uh, the other character, uh, because of his intrusiveness, uh, attempts suicide. And that, of course, uh, reflects back on our main, main uh, character, who will be, uh, start kind of transformation and will become a more caring, concerned, uh, sensitive person. So you can go both ways. And the idea is that uh, you stay on the same axis, you stay on the same uh, character trait, while your character can uh, go up and down on this axis. Joseph Campbell says that the only way you can describe a human being truly is by describing him, um, his imperfections. The perfect human being is uninteresting. We all know this, this is not a new thing, but you can use this dynamic character traits that uh, to show these imperfections, 
in a, I would say, economic way. Or Robert McKee, uh, in his book, The Story, Substance, Structure, Style, and the Principles of Screenwriting, writes that the finest writing not only reveals through character, but arcs or changes that inner nature for better or worse over the course of the telling. And again, you see how this uh, dynamic character traits can, can help doing this. And now let's see how it works. And we go back to Breaking Bad, episode one. Uh, the protagonist is Walter White. And I'm sure many of you have seen that the series, if you remember, um, he's a very determined person. He actually borrows the equipment from the chemistry lab of the school where he teaches to, to do what? Well, to cook met methamphetamine together with one of his former students, ex-students. And uh, this fake is just determined. It's not a negative thing. And probably the, the, the principal of the school wouldn't be happy with the, with the things borrowed, but he doesn't uh, hurt anyone. But in the next uh, scene, we can see him in, uh, in another mode, but still, still on the same character trait. When Pinkman, his ex-student, hesitates to cook together with Walter, he becomes pushing. He says, either that or I turn you in, which is actually blackmailing. For another, uh, he's a teacher, so education, educating is something uh, uh, close to his heart. And even uh, uh, because of the situation and that uh, uh, his uh, former student is not really about, you know, he's not caring well too much about chemistry, he's educating and, and tries to explain the difference between a volumetric and a boiling class. But in the next episode, you can see him they are talking on the phone and he says, you skipped, clowned around or otherwise jerked off through every lecture I gave. As far as I'm concerned, your chemistry education is over. The same character trait, but now it goes from educating to lecturing. It's a good question if uh, dynamic character traits work for secondary characters or not. I think they work very well for secondary characters as well. And if we stay with, uh, with uh, Breaking Bad and Walter White, we can see one of the secondary characters, his wife, Skylar, when she's caring uh, and the next scene a bit intrusive. Well, we can see her being uh, uh, caring while she prepares uh, veggie bacon for Walter because of his cholesterol issues. But in the next sentence, he says, she says, you get paid till five, you work till five, no later. Which is more intrusive? Now, knowing the context, it's not, it's, uh, uh, we have to add that since uh, his birthday is coming, they are preparing um, a surprise party. But the way she says and the way he reacts uh, makes clear that this is probably not the first time when she tries to, to, uh, to say exactly what to do at the work or, or she is a bit intrusive. I can give you some more examples from, uh, from novels and uh, films. Tyler Burden, for instance, from Fight Club. Um, Travis from Taxi Diver. They're both cases determined, pushing. Elizabeth and Mrs. Dar Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, where I think they are on the dynamic character trait of self-esteem versus cockiness. Or Bridget Jones from Bridget Jones Diary, when she is humorous or sarcastic and causes problems when he slides from the first one to the second one. And uh, Uthred, son of Uthred from The Last Kingdom. This is another TV series where courageous and reckless is, uh, uh, is the dynamic character trait. One of my students told about another series, uh, The Vikings, and uh, he said that there the main character has exactly the same uh, dynamic character trait. So maybe this is a common thing for, uh, for Viking series. Um, a certain trait, though, to become um, a dynamic character trait has to have a moral value, moral charge. Otherwise, we cannot talk about positive and negative sides. For instance, intelligence is not a dynamic character trait. I think intelligence is not a, doesn't have a moral value, though you can use intelligence in good or bad ways. But in, uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's neutral or, or physical strength, for instance. Um, and on the other hand, uh, when we compare this model with the big five model, 
uh, we can see that many of these from the big five don't have uh, uh, moral values like extroversion, introversion. You can be either of these, but it doesn't mean that you are a better or the worse person. Openness, closeness to experience and so on. Um, and I would give you some arguments for using the DCTs. Um, it makes a character a multidimensional um, within the boundaries of the same character trait, as I mentioned before. Uh, it's realistic. It resembles the way we act in real life. Uh, and that's why it makes for the audience easy to empathize with, with DCTs because we can recognize uh, ourselves in certain situations. Of course, I don't want to say that this is the, this is the best way to, to do uh, uh, um, uh, to do it, absolutely not. Not even the fact that your main character should have a dynamic character trait, but maybe it's a question worth uh, uh, asking. Do I do it uh, need my uh, character uh, such kind of trait? There are some uh, genres where dynamic character traits, character traits are not so important. When there's a lot of action, for instance, let's say Sandra Bullock's character from uh, Gravity. She doesn't need a dynamic character trait because she in a, she's in a Russian space capsule hurling towards the uh, Earth in an uncontrollable way. So that's enough tension and uh, there is no, no space and time for dynamic character traits. So it's also a bit, uh, more genre related, I think. And I think it's in accordance with the Christian worldview of the fallen human character. Um, since we all experience how good intentions or things which start good can be easily ended up, end up in, a, in, a, in a very different way or uh, how we can uh, um, uh, change Actually, our actions and our reactions can change uh, during time. Well, um, this is some of the references I used. And uh, when I'm, thank you for your attention. And before we do the little writing exercise, if you are interested in, uh, this is some of the other things I do uh, when I'm not teaching at the university. I will stop sharing now. And uh, maybe we should uh, have some questions and answers now, and then see if we can go to, to the writing uh, phase. This is, this is my suggestion. OK. Thank you so much, Balaj. Is it uh, DCTs or DCT apostrophe S, Coletta is <laughs> Uh, thank you for attention and sorry for all the mistakes since English is my third language. So uh, I, I do do the, the effort, but uh, uh, this is how it goes. Yes, yeah, so um, would there be any questions from the floor? Uh, dynamic character traits, is it? Dynamic character traits. Um, as opposed to the ver the static one, where you kind of um, project the same, but you are through a a spectrum of uh, yes, a spectrum of how you portray your characters. Okay. Any uh, would there be any uh, example in the Bible like uh, Peter? Um, from being so talkative and uh, talk first before thinking to a very uh, dynamic preacher. What, what can examples could be from the New Testament or from the Old Testament? Balaz. Oh, good question. Um... I think, for instance, David is a very interesting character, mm -hmm. uh, King David. Mm -hmm. uh, I, though it seems so obvious, but I, uh, yeah, I didn't research the the biblical heroes from this point of view. Though it's a great idea, uh, 
mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. how how they they uh, if they correspond to this one. Yeah, because they they in their uh, in their journey um, they they are like we see Peter being so um, reckless uh and becoming more intentional uh and basically courageous in the in the uh yes mm -hmm. yeah in the um act yeah so he is, is more reckless in the in the uh, gospels and and then then more uh, an, uh, mm -hmm. a courageous person in the act and then we can discuss about if this is the work of the holy spirit of course yes yeah so with this method, you are actually bringing a lot of, uh, what do you call that? Uh, people can swing from one uh, kind of a character to another in the story. And that really makes it very interesting. Yes, and, and you, you see that uh... It's basically the same thing can work in, in, in a way or in a completely different way. You can overdo things and you can exaggerate things. And mm -hmm. in a way, this is about exaggerating, but it's, I think, a bit more complex since, uh, um, yeah, exaggerating is, is some, it, it works, but it becomes more a character trait or more, uh, um, it can become also a habit or something which is more, more closer to the, to the core of the character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially if we talk about the negative part of the axis, then that becomes tragical in, in any story. I see. Oh, Sunday, uh, Alexis? <laughs> some examples from Bible. No, that, that, yeah, if some examples from the Bible can help us. Yes, mm -hmm. well, um, that would be, um, I think, a different, uh, different uh, webinar, and needing some some uh, uh, serious preparation because you have to filter through the story with with uh, the all the stories with these eyes, and um, uh, many times we um, see characters only in one stage in the Bible or in a change from a positive, in, from a negative to a positive, I think. Not all the way, we, we can see also the other way. But um, yeah, now that, that would need, need some, some research, I think, going through many, many, many stories. Um, but I see the need, especially for those who, who view write stories for children, for uh, 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 especially Christian stories or Bible stories, um, I see this, but I'm sure that if you, well, it can be done. So we can find examples from the Bible, quite many. Yes, yes. Marjorie is asking, what did you call the second model you spoke of? Yeah, the first model was the big five, what I used only for reference. And the second one, which basically gave the title of my uh, webinar was dynamic character traits. The first one was the big five. Yeah, with the opposites. I see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Coletta. Uh -huh. Okay. Coletta, the perfect wife, the main character is very confident and geeky, and in some places he shows up as quite cocky. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Kelly Chua, besides using vivid adjectives to describe characters, does the use of verbs bring out the character traits as well? Yeah, uh, positive, well, I think um, um, when you write a story, you are not so much interested in adjectives anymore because uh, the thing we are talking about is revealed within the story. So you don't need really the adjectives. You need the, the idea of what is the axis on which the, the, uh, your character is moving up and down. And I think some of the character traits are, are more 
difficult to be stuck in a box or in one word. Uh, yeah, so adjectives doesn't help you all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but what do you mean when you say um, the verbs, what the character would use or uh, to describe with these verbs, the character? That would be interesting to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you, Balas. I think you have a writing exercise uh, for our audience. Yeah, so the idea was that uh, maybe if the audience is, uh, uh, is willing, we can do uh, five or 10 minutes um you can try to think on one uh, specific character trait either it was listed in my list or something completely but it should be a dynamic character trait and to think on a story seed so uh, you don't have to develop a whole story of course but just an, an incident from which a story can be uh, developed uh, I, I gave some examples um, uh, previously um yes and i will project again some of the the uh, dynamic character traits and i think um after five or ten minutes we can maybe hear some of these or you can write them in the in the chat and that would be a nice a nice feedback for me so i i go back to uh project at least the first because there are two slides or, or after the time i will change and show the uh, the other slide with dynamic character traits. I have to restart probably. There you have a, a, sorry, can you see, you know, I still have to share. Yes. Okay, maybe now you can see the first uh, six. Is it on the screen? Yes, yes, I, I see Great. them. Uh, yes, so. So courageous, reckless, persistent, stubborn, prudent, covered, confident, arrogant, determined, pushing, sincere, tactless. And we have a second one with another six. Of course, this is not a complete list. Yes, Marjorie is saying some of us aren't used to writing fiction. So this is an exercise. Yes, you can do it or not do it or just think on it. So uh, uh, yes. So you're asking uh, our audience to write a paragraph or with the write the three or four sentences, three or which four sentences. Be a, a beginning of a story or um, a summary or source summary of the story when in which we can see one dynamic character trait at work. So in one phase we can see the character uh, on one end of the uh, of a certain dynamic character trait, and we see the change how and what makes him to move to the other one. Okay. Like how the character becomes from economical to miser, or from com compassionate to easily influenced, or the other way. So you can work both ways. It doesn't mean that from the positive to the negative necessary. Okay. So we have the next uh, five to ten minutes of writing exercise. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I will change from time to time the two lists to see that so you can see you can see both of them.
Can the sentences be a dialogue? Excuse me? Can, can, can the sentences that we are supposed to write, can it be a dialogue? It can be, yes. If it, it reflects the change in the character, of course it can be. Okay. Yes, Alexis, you have a question? In the me meantime, we already have a, a story seed from Karen Chua. Yes. May I read it? Yes, please, Malash. Dan was courageous being the adventurous type. He loved to try new things. However, once his courage went to the extreme, he was reckless to cycle even without his helmet and even using free hand. Wow, it suddenly becomes interesting and yeah, we just hope that he will not have some horrible accident. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are drawn to the story right away by the way Kelly wrote it. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. This is Coletta. Okay. I will do this one as well. Yes. Kim bit his lower lip and looked pleadingly into Marjorie's tear-filled eyes. This was the second time in the span of 20 minutes that he had uttered words that seemed to have upset Marjorie. What kind of a date was this, where each time he opened his mouth, he put his foot in it? He wondered to himself, I didn't mean to call you an ignorant or closed-minded Marjorie. Kim started explaining. I was merely pointing out that this being the 21st century where information is on our fingertips, thanks to Google, no one should claim to be ignorant or everyday happening, of everyday happenings, such as what is happening in Russia and Ukraine. Granted, Kim's confidence sometimes seemed to turn ahead of him. To run Thank you. Very well. Yeah, it's the dating situation. Mm -hmm. But if you think on Pride and Prejudice, it's also uh, actually the, the thing which holds back the two, two lovers to finally reunite and to have the happy ending is that uh, it's, it's a dynamic character trait. Kellen is saying that he, she's writing devotional materials and using lots of testimonies to inspire others. Thanks for teaching me to help my character come alive. Thank you, Kelly, for that encouraging feedback. You're really welcome. Yes. Anunciata, thank you for the presentation. These are new things we learn. Thank you for being here, Anunciata. She's from Rwanda. I was- I'm really happy for that few weeks ago.
uh, Sandy Alexis was asking a bit uh, a few, few minutes again uh, before, can you share with us your experience in building characters in writing, please? Who, uh, that's a very good question and a difficult one because um, I think um, I use this method as better as, um, as, um, as checking myself and checking the characters, not to, it's not like you put together a character choosing three dynamic character traits, mixing them, because that's still not a story. So you have, have to start from some point, the story to develop. And then from time to time, I can ask myself, what traits do the characters have? Are they dynamic? Do I need any uh, dynamic one? And so on. And if I have one, how can I use it in a, to develop the uh, story further? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Colette, I think it's, it's, it's obvious from your story that you are trying to bring out how an educating character trait can easily turn into lecturing. I don't, yeah, you, you succeeded. <laughs> I think this is a very good way of, uh, you know, creating the stories and making it really more interesting and engaging. Uh, the swings of the, the, the temperament. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it makes you read, would want to read more and would want to finish the chapter or yeah, turn the page. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I think there are so many stories where um, Characters are so, well, this is an overused term, one dimensional, that it's, yeah. it describes somehow the, the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I have the feeling that writers are just afraid of giving uh, negative traits to their characters, their beloved characters. But mm -hmm. you make them just more human. So uh, you don't have to be afraid. It's really hard to empathize with someone who is perfect. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, because we cannot um, recognize our uh, humanness and our fall fallenness. So I think it's a mixture. So our heroes should not be perfect. <laughs> and most of the times, yeah. I mean, there are some genres where it's okay, but uh, I think many more times it's not, or not enough. Yes. Very good. Do we have more examples coming up? Would you like to, uh, I can allow you to speak if you want to read your, your paragraph yourself. Just raise your hand. Okay. It seems like this was it. Yes, yes. This story. So thank you so much, Balaj. Um, may I ask you to give your parting words of encouragement to our audience? Of course, uh, first of all, I, I want to thank you for your attention and, and your, uh, uh, well, I mean, your attention. <laughs> and you were uh, gracious with me and with my English. Um, what I see, because I also work with, uh, with students who want to write, want to create stories, is that, um, um, yeah, we talked about persistence and stubbornness as a dynamic character trait. And I, I wish you have the persistence to, to, to do this and to develop your story. And uh, I think at least for me, especially when I work with long form novels, for instance, that finding the time becomes so, so paramount. Um, you cannot really do the long form if you do not work on a regular basis. 
And the other thing is that uh, if you do not use the best hours of the day, best hours for your mind, I would say, it can be a really, really difficult task. And in my uh, case, I was so grateful that I could uh, uh, work at the university and I could manage to have all my classes in the afternoon. But even in my previous workplace, I had to make some compromises to have at least every second morning for me to write. So that's, that's a huge challenge, but I think it's it worth doing. Uh, if you are not a full-time writer, and most of us, they are not, um, without this kind of regular and uh, uh, regular work, uh, it's quite difficult to, to accomplish and to wish. And I, I, I wish you and I pray for you for this one. So what you're saying, Balaz, is we need to exercise we need to be disciplined to practice it right exactly uh, it's, um, i have little experience with writing non-fiction non-fiction works a bit in a, dif in a different way but especially with fiction and long form you cannot put it away for a week for instance and they say okay i well sometimes you have to because that's life but the ideal is to to uh to work on a regular basis because you have to keep in mind your whole story and all the secondary characters, all the relations between them. And yeah, and if you just have to stop and start again and stop again, uh, fatigue can come in. And after a time you say, okay, I just, I want to forget about this one. And it doesn't work. Yes, so thank you for that uh, encouragement. Um, Jose Carlos, said uh what did this carlos said say he was in your workshop at uh at lit world oh yes yes <laughs> it was kenya wow that was 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> thank you carlos and uh, a lot of uh, uh, uh good wishes to coletta with trying her hand on fiction for young adults. It's, mm, mm -hmm. it's a difficult one, but uh, worth trying, absolutely. Mm -hmm. By the way, Jose Carlos asked, uh, are your books in English? Are they all in? Uh, unfortunately in not. Uh, some of them, these were translated into Czech and I have a selection of my short stories for children, only a selection in, uh, in English. Only in paper version, but if uh, he's interested or anyone, I can I can send a PDF of of these uh, stories uh, in English. So uh, my longer things are not translated into English yet. I hope they will be. Okay, well, your your book has been given award, so I hope the English publishers would take notice and perhaps uh, get the translation rights. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. Yes. Thank you so much, Balash, for um, being our speaker this morning, today. Uh, what you've taught us is really very important, and uh, writers should be able to incorporate this uh, into the writing, into their writing. So thank you so much for, for telling us and teaching us of the dynamic character traits model. Next, Thank you so much, also. Yes, our next webinar next month will be on December 13th with Hankuri Pawus Gaya of Nigeria as our speaker. His topic will be on how to mentor your country's future writers and leaders. So we hope uh, you could join us next month. So thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you again, Balas, for your You're time welcome. and for sharing uh, this very important writing tip and we uh, wish everyone keep writing and uh, continue to uh, work towards um, producing life transforming materials for your own people in your own language thank you so much god bless you all Goodbye for now.